Ambitus is a new open source project designed to help developers better understand how their existing open source environment can be implemented and operated on a mainframe. To learn more about this project, today we have with us Joe Bostian, Chair of the Ambitus project at the Open Mainframe Project. Joe, it's great to have you on the show. Let's talk about the project. What is it all about and what is the story behind the name? Yeah, so the story behind the name, um, to begin with that, it is uh, it's Latin for compass. And uh, the point of our project is to try to help people looking for open source software that runs on IBM Z to find the kinds of things that they may need to do for their day-to-day -day development activities. So the Amplitude project is, is aimed at developers who perhaps have an idea for a, a, a project of their own, but they, uh, the, it's not a large enough project that, that needs to have its, its, own, its own space under the open mainframe project umbrella. We host a number of sub projects that have a code base, for instance, and a number of users who work on that code base. But the uh, administration of, of maintaining a particular project under the Open Mainframe project is, is something that perhaps this particular sub project is not large enough to, to justify. So in a lot of cases, we have, we have code bases and, and tool sets that are just that. A, a code base and a tool set. And if you put them together with some of the other projects that we have under Ambitus, you can start to create a pipeline of, uh, of useful content. And, uh, and so it's in, in a sense, uh, a toolkit, or uh, you could think of it like a toolkit where you can discover um, useful bits and pieces that would work in a, in a more integrated workflow. Can you explain the working of the project? How does it work? So if, if someone has an idea for a project, um, for instance, I created, one, um, I've created one that, uh, that uses Jupyter Notebooks to go off and, uh, and run workloads on a, on a ZOS platform. Uh, that is a, a modest project of several hundred lines of code. Um, it was a good idea. I wanted to implement that and, and just share it with others. I went and took it before the technical steering committee for the, for the Ambitus project and said, I have this idea. Um, got some advice on, on what kinds of best practices I needed to follow in terms of copyright statements and licensing and, and other assets that need to be included with the project. And then I was allowed to go ahead and post my code under a, rep a repository. So now it's out there, it's available for, for anyone who wants to then build upon that. And um, it's just a, a very good place to keep it. Otherwise, it might be under my own repo, under my name, and unless people know who I am, they'll never know that, that that code is available. Does Ambitus also host projects and resources? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, we do that. And we have, for instance, uh, uh, repositories that just have examples in, uh, of various techniques. So we, we post Docker files, for instance, we, we post shell scripts and tools and things like that. What kind of resources are there to help developers not only better understand how they can bring their projects to open mainframe, but also get started with these projects? So there is, there is some uh, background and history of open source development on ZOS that people may find useful, um, particular, uh, particular attributes of the platform that they have to be aware of that perhaps they may not need to be aware of on other platforms. For instance, most of the world runs in, uh, in an either an, an ASCII code page or uh, perhaps a, a Unicode uh, code page. The native code page on, on ZOS is, is EBCDIC. Right. We, uh, that was part of the mainframe from years and years ago. So uh, it's one thing to be aware of, and, and we have some of that kind of information you know, available. Um, as far as, as um, learning you know, um, how to, how to, where to find resources to do actual development on ZOS, uh, we, we can point to other, other projects under the Open Mainframe project where they can provision perhaps a virtual machine to go off and do development. There are other efforts under the OMP as well, where, where we can go ahead and share that and direct them to, you know, to those resources. Especially in the academic community, there's a lot of work in that space. And uh, so we can, it's a, it's a good place to start if you just wanna ask questions and know where to go. And, and we're happy to guide anybody who has, you know, is looking for answers. Can you also talk about what kind of sub projects do you host? So one of the sub projects we host is called CB Explorer. It is a uh, it is a a tool that allows you to look through memory and explore published control blocks of ZOS. 
So there, there, there are books out there that explain the different data areas of ZOS system. Those are all published interfaces that don't really have application programming interfaces associated with them, um, not, in a, not in a high level language. They're all, they're all assembler uh, interfaces. So the control block explorer lets you go out and explore those published control blocks, look around and, and see what's there. And it helps to format the kinds of, uh, of data you may, you may find uh, interesting and useful. That's something that's very close to the ZOS operating system as an example. We also provide a, a repository for Linux containers where we have a set of Docker files that are available that tell you and give you uh, directions on how to build uh, a Docker container that could be deployed on Linux on Z or on ZOS. They're Linux based containers. Um, so generally speaking, we find that, that people um, from the open source community find that, that quite useful. And, uh, and then in addition to the Docker files are also the usage notes. How do you start the container? What are the, uh, you know, the different arguments to starting it and things like that. Um, so we give a lot of examples there as well. Uh, another one is, is a sub project called PyZ Kiln. When I was speaking earlier about the toolkit or the toolbox approach, these are just code fragments and code subroutines that um, don't stand alone, even as a sub project under our ambitus. So we, we could just as easily call this the, uh, you know, the Python based toolbox, right? So those are just three of them. There are, there are probably another 10, uh, you know, that we have out there in various, um, you know, that perform various other kinds of uh, functions. And, um, and certainly it's a, a, a wide ranging set of functionality that we have available. Um, again, in, in terms of starting up a project on your own, there is none of these sort of rise to the point where it, it makes it worth your time um, as, a, as a project, uh, a potential project uh, owner to go forward and, and, and set everything up and make it work on your own. We want to provide a place for you to just push your code to a repository and, uh, and essentially publish it that way. Can you talk about what kind of roadmap is there for the projects? What are the things that are in the pipeline? What's your goal? So, uh, so our, our goals are to, to, um, to en enhance the adoption of these workflows and these tool sets, uh, you know, across the spectrum, right, of, uh, of, of open source capabilities for, for IBM Z, for both Linux, you know, and ZOS. Those are our primary platforms that, that we're focused on. Um, the wider we can, we can build the uh, the code base of user or the base of users, then the better off you know we're going to be. And ideally, uh, we could get to the point where we start graduating maybe some of these programs to their own to their own particular um, their own particular project under under the Open Mainframe project. In a sense, we can we can serve the purpose of being a, a mini incubator, right? And uh, if if a, a project gets to a point, um, the the CB Explorer, the Control Block Explorer that I mentioned before. When the uh, originators of that sub project came to me, we had a long discussion about whether this should be a standalone project under, under the OMP or whether Ambitus is the better place for it. And so we decided to put it there. It is gaining some notoriety and some, uh, some momentum. And uh, who knows, maybe someday in the future that, that will be uh, you know, graduated up a level and sort of be a peer of the, of the Ambitus project. Now let's talk about the community aspect. What kind of community is there around this project? Yeah, our community is basically essentially a, a community of developers. We we do span now at least three different you know organizations. IBM certainly being one. Um, we interact with Rocket Software. We have other you know other members as well who who join our our technical steering committee uh, meetings and um, and uh, you know we're we're looking all the time you know to to grow and involve. Uh, folks from other organizations as well. If somebody's interested in bringing their projects to open mainframe or mainframe, how can they get it started? What are the resources that are available to them? If you have any tips for them? If someone's interested, I would suggest going to our, our Ambitus uh, readme and, uh, and looking there. We have all our contacts there. You can certainly get you know, my email address. You could contact anyone on our, uh, on our maintainers list and, um, and get started there. Uh, certainly, please uh, consider joining our Slack channel and uh, and our email list, 
and uh, and just asking questions. Uh, people are very helpful there, and uh, you will get answers. You know, if you if you throw questions out there, uh, for people to to answer. Joe, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this project. And I look forward to our next conversation. Thank you. Thank you.